Joining us now, former ESPN personality, Jay Crawford. Jay, how are you feeling? Thanks for taking the time. What are your feelings on the current state of college football? I love it. I've been streaming for more than four forever, and I think 12 is the perfect number. You can look around college football, and the old argument used to be every game counts. And while that may have been true for half a dozen to maybe a dozen teams, um, now look at the teams that two lost teams aren't out of it. And that's great. I mean, I think that makes meaningful football games um, all the way through the end of the season. You've got so many teams that are in that mix for the top 12 that I think the expansion of the playoffs is going to make even more meaningful games in the month of November. And that's what you want. It gets boring when there's only six teams left the last two or three weeks of the season. Uh, we're going to have anything but boredom, I think, at the end of the year this year. Jay, the expansion of the Big Ten is obviously about Oregon, USC, UCLA, Washington in this mix. Now you look at Oregon, you have um, uh, Ohio State, Penn State, Indiana's right up there. Where do you see the Big Ten kind of fitting in, getting potentially th three, maybe even four teams into this playoff come when the polls come out in just two weeks? I think there will be three, and you might be able to make an argument for four. It just depends on how everything shakes out. But when you look at, you know, we may still have the best team from college football might come from the Southeastern Conference, who knows? But I think with the quality and the depth that's in the Big Ten, and I'm, I'm, I'm not ready to say that Penn State is a legitimate contender yet. I want to wait on that. But I think Oregon is. I think Ohio State is. Obviously, Michigan, Michigan is down this year. But I love the depth and the quality of the Big Ten Conference. I think, um, man, when you think about winning this conference, what it's going to take, this is, this is not going to be easy for anyone. And now I know everybody wants to kind of anoint Oregon as the, the class of the Big Ten. Um, I'm not ready to say that yet. I, I just think if Ohio State and Oregon played on a neutral field ten times, Ohio State would win six of them. Mm. Um, it, even the game in Eugene came down to a 12-man on the field penalty that was <laughs> so egregious they forced them to change the rules. Have you guys ever seen that? A rule change in the middle of the season – after one exploitation of a loophole? Yeah. But David. Yeah, the, the only time I can remember that is Kenny Pickett's fake slide. Oh, yeah. Where that guy right. turned around pretty quick. But Jay, I'm with you on the Oregon Ohio State thing. And I go back to that game in particular as we kind of preview Ohio State. Does it seem like or I get the offense with Judkins and Smith and 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 they I mean they're prolific. I want to go to the defense with under Coach Knowles and the combination with Larry Johnson Sr. They they didn't really get after the quarterback a ton. I think Gabriel had some time. They got hit with those gap runs kind of to the boundary. When you look at their talent defensively versus the statistical outputs, what are you seeing with this Buckeye defense? Well, for starters, I hope you guys are working on a lot of routes number seven. <laughs> because Denzel Burke is, um, he is... Struggling. You always want to find the guy on the defense that you can exploit. That's not a, that's not hard to do this year with this Buckeye team. And you guys mentioned the lack of pressure, too. It's driving me crazy watching this team because this team in the past has had the kind of talent that really gets after quarterbacks and makes it difficult. They let him sit back there all night and pick them to pieces. You can't just send four yep. against a quarterback like that. And I know the fear is he gets outside the pocket – if you don't set the edges, he can really hurt you that way, and he did. But I just, I'm from the school of, uh, if you're going to err, err on the side of being aggressive. And Ohio State did exactly the opposite um, last week against Oregon. They just sat back and let him pick his spots. And Burke is such a deficiency in the back end of that defense that it wasn't hard for him to figure out where he wanted to go with the football. They've got to get better in that spot. And I know depth is a problem at that position, but as long as he's on the field, um, I'm looking for him. And I'm sure Matt is driving that home this week in practice. And identify where is seven and get favorable matchups against seven. And you guys could have a, a prolific day passing the ball. And you mentioned the combo of what's going on defensively for the Buckeyes. It's just not impressive. Um, I know that it's been a problem in the past, it's still a problem. And I think when they lose games, it's going to be because of shootouts, because their offense is so prolific. 
but their defense is not. And that's how you're going to beat the Buckeyes. You're not going to beat them in a 10-7. Right. You're going to beat them in a game, and it's like a track. And just like the Oregon game, that's the perfect blueprint for how you beat them. Jay, uh, obviously Ohio State's been on a historic run of quarterbacks the last 10 to 15 years. I'm curious, what is the ground-level view on Will Howard thus far? Because you guys have had a plethora of first-round draft picks there, and you know, what's the, the viewpoint on him early on out there? I, I think, by and large, he's lived up to expectations. You know, I say that wishing I could bulk erase the last play of the Oregon game. I just, for the life of me, I can't understand how his situational awareness was that bad. Mm. And the problem with that is, and this is, this is just a product of Ohio State's dominance and the schedule that they play, they're in three to four games a year. That's it. Everything else is over by halftime. And the problem is the knife gets dull because you're not sharpening it. And so what we saw in that Oregon game was there's going to be games this year that come down to the last minute. Can you execute and commit an offense? And I just was, I was flabbergasted, thunderstruck. I'm at a loss for words. I don't, I don't know what I was looking at when he took off the run, knowing where the clock was. Um, so that has, I think, that has Buckeye fans very concerned yeah. because you're going to be in close games this year. That's a fact. And particularly when you get in the playoff and you want your best players to rise to the occasion. And he did not do that. So um, I think there's concern about Will Howard in perhaps those late and close situations. And now what he's going to have to do to earn the respect of not just the fan base, but the coaches and his teammates He's going to have to find himself in a close game late, and he's going to have to come through in that situation just so he can prove to everybody that he can be that dude because mm. he was not last Saturday. Jay, we appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Enjoy the game on Saturday. Absolutely, guys. Enjoy the game. All right, now it's time for viewer questions. A portion of the show is for the viewers now. They've sent in a number of things. Sean, have you heard anything about how injured Rayola may be at all with that ankle? It's hard to say because um, there were a couple moments on Saturday you could see him wobbling off the field, but you know th there's been no clear report other than it's that time of year every guy's battling bumps and bruises here and there. Uh, but you know we didn't see Rayola really take off and run at all in that game, right. and there were probably a couple opportunities where he could have. Um, and, and you didn't see that real push off. So that will be something to watch closely early in this game. Jay Larry on X says, uh, why does it seem like the D is never in the right gaps? DN's not staying home, front seven running into each other like little kids <laughs> playing soccer. All yeah, bunched I mean, up. It was discombobulated from the get go on, on Saturday, that's for sure. But that's where I think Nebraska defensively, you can kind of get a little too complicated because you have nine, you have such an old defense. You think you can start getting and doing some unique things. Sometimes, you know what the best thing to do as a defense when you're struggling? Just line up on base and go play. And just do what you do well mm -hmm. and just do it again. I think at the times of playing defense, we try to get too cute, too unique, and uh, you'd get gashed a little bit. And it's like, we're just going to play base. And it's like, oh, huh, we got to kind of figure it out. So um, that's going to be a thing to see is just how complicated Nebraska wants to, to keep it on Saturday. Is there someone on the offense, Damon, that you want to see get more touches? Yeah, Jalen Lloyd, for, yeah. for starters. Mm -hmm. um, not, not just because I know him so well, but I, I know kind of a competitor he is. Yep. Uh, he's a winner, uh, and he's going to lay it on the line uh, and, and do what he's asked. And then maybe uh, you need an outside receiver um, to kind of step up. And I don't – you can even move a hybrid tight end to give you another big body kind of passing yeah. target. But – uh, Jalen White is one for sure that, that I'd like to see because I you can move him around. He knows all three positions, yeah. and, and I think he's ready to go. Well, Damon's describing it. It sounds like Carter Nelson may be getting him some chances. Depends on if they want to play him. Well, we saw him play a record number of snaps um, in terms of in the offense this last week, and, and we saw Ja'Cory Barney. Um, so there was a clear effort to ramp up the reps for those two freshmen um, on the flip side, Janiron Bonner, I believe, only played one or two snaps yeah. in that game. So there was kind of a reversal of the roles, an emphasis over the bye week to obviously get a couple of those talented freshmen more involved in the offense. Steve, 30 seconds. Steve wants to know uh, more pre-stat motion. How does that affect the defense? It's communication. And it helps when you pre-stat motion, especially at a bunch or you get to bunch. Defense got to back up to allow – so otherwise you can't – you can – cut yourself off defensively. So yeah. they might see that uh, a little more, you know, using that to affect this 
offense that couldn't get them going. 20 seconds, you want to see more of that? Yeah, I, I do. And passing off coverage. And they have to mirror the pass, the, the secondary coverage with being able to fit in the run game. Mm -hmm. Let's go to our burning questions, John. My burning question is, can Matt Rule control the noise, handle the noise this week? Um, and, and, you know, they found out. It's... You know, it's, it's turned pretty quickly here. <laughs> it's, yeah. You know, the, there, there's a lot of critics and a lot of voices out there, and these are the weeks as a head coach you really earn your money at a place like Nebraska. Damn yeah, it. Can they make it about them, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of piggyback what Sean said, but what's going to help them get out of this doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. It, it's about those guys in that building. Yeah, it's, it's similar to Damon. And Matt Rory said this, forget the scoreboard. Just go play. Yeah. Just go play. It doesn't matter if you're up 14 nothing, down 21 nothing. It does not matter. I've said that many times. Good defenses, good teams, don't worry about it. Let your coaches handle that. It doesn't matter if the play call. Just go execute you and do your job. Fight, compete, and uh, let it hang out there. Whatever happens, happens. Obviously, Ohio State's had the week off. They're going to come out fired up. Let's see if Nebraska can stay in it in the first quarter. And you got three quarters to win it.